In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how the UiPath continue and break activities work. In a previous tutorial, I created a little application that went through the first 11 Fibonacci numbers. You can see I've got a variable called Fibonacci numbers here. It's got 11 different elements in the array, and I've got a for loop that loops through each of them. Now, this for loop just prints out the value of each number through a log message. The number is item.toString. But let's imagine that we only wanted to print out the odd numbers in Fibonacci sequence. How would we do that? Well, one way we could do it is by using the mod operator and figuring out which indexes in the array are odd. And then when we do encounter one, don't print out the log message, but instead go back to the start of the loop and work on the next element. In order to do that, we would use a continue element, a continue activity in our application. So let me show you how this would be done. I'm going to add an if activity here. So I'll drag the if activity into the body of the loop. And I'm going to say, you know, if the current Fibonacci number is even, don't print it out. Skip it. Just go back to the start of the loop and find the next number in the array. And so the condition is basically to see if the number, the item, is even or odd, um, specifically whether it's even. So notice that uh, the for each here, the argument type is set to object. That's the default. Of course, the array actually has nothing but ints in it. So here I'm gonna actually specify that int32 is the argument type for the for each loop. That's something to interesting to note. They'll probably ask you a question or two about what the default variable is for a for each loop on the UiPath associate exam. So be, be ready, be careful about that. But now that we've said that this is actually gonna be an int32 value, what I wanna do is I wanna check to see if that item mod two equals zero. Because if that number divided by two has no remainder, that means it's an odd number. And I said, we only want to print out the, that means it's an even number. And we only want to print out the odd numbers. So how do we do that? Well, if the number is even, what we want to do is just do a continue. So I'll type in continue, drag the continue activity over. And now if I run this sequence in the output window, we should not see the number two, eight or 34. So let me click Control S, run the file. It'll first give me a message box telling me that there's 11 elements in the array. But when I look at the output, notice 11352139. We didn't print out any of those even numbers. Okay, so that's the idea of the continue. If you hit a continue, it says, don't break out of the loop, don't stop the loop, but stop any further execution of logic during this iteration and go back to the start of the loop activity, the iterative component, and then start again. Now, let's say we didn't want to print out any numbers greater than nine, right? We don't want any whole numbers. So in order to do that, what you can do is you can add a break and a break just breaks you out of the activity altogether. So I'm going to add another if statement here. I'm not going to do a nested if statement. I'm going to add another if statement entirely. And I'm going to say if the item is greater than nine, so if the number is greater than nine, then I'm just going to break out of the loop. Okay. And so this means as soon as we hit something that's greater than nine, we're just going to stop execution entirely. We're not going to go to the top of the loop and run another time. We're just going to ex exit execution completely and go to the, the end of the loop. And in fact, I might even add a message box activity right at the end of the loop, right at the end of the sequence, actually, that says we are done with the loop. Okay, and that'll just prove that yeah, we've actually exited out of the loop completely. So I'm going to clear the output window. I'm going to run the file. And when I click run, well, we're going to get a message box saying that there's 11 elements. Then 
the message box will come up and say, we are done the loop. Now in the meantime, before it said we are done the loop, if we actually went back to UiPath, we would notice that we actually got some output before that message box popped up and it printed out all of the odd Fibonacci numbers that were less than 10. Once it got to a number greater than 10, it just broke out of the loop and said, we are done the loop. And there you go. That is the idea behind working with UiPath Continue and UiPath Break Statements.